Have you ever clicked on a video of a so-called no-need bread where they ask you to do a million folds? They must think you're a clown, because after all, folding is just another type of kneading. So in this video, I'll show you an actual no-need sandwich bread. I'll begin by adding 8 grams of salt into a large bowl, followed by 20 grams of sugar, which is not only for sweetness, it also acts as a preservative as well as making the crumb more tender. The sugar is followed by 500 grams of strong white flour, which is flour with around 12.5% protein content. You can try using all-purpose flour, but for a bread that's not going to be kneaded, a higher protein flour is what I recommend. On top of the flour goes 5 grams of instant dry yeast. And now I'll use a fork to mix all the dry ingredients together. Whenever I use dry yeast, that's my general procedure, because there's no need to proof or bloom any type of dry yeast, be it instant or active dry. The moisture in the dough will be enough for the yeast to get going. When all the dry components have been combined, I make a well and add 350 grams of warm whole milk. And now I'll take the fork and mix everything up. You may be asking yourself, where is the oil or butter? Well, using whole milk solves this problem, because aside from having water in its composition, pasteurized whole milk has around 3% of fat content, and I'm taking advantage of that. At first, the dough will look too dry, but be patient because it's not. In a matter of seconds, it will transform into a blob. I continue to mix the dough until all the dry ingredients have disappeared, and then I place a kitchen towel over the bowl, and take it to the oven with the light on to ferment. While the dough is fermenting, I'll show you the dimensions of the bread pan I'll bake it in, because that can sometimes be an issue. Mine has 23 centimeters or 9 inches in length, 11 centimeters or 4.5 inches in width, 8.5 centimeters or 3.5 inches in height, and 10 centimeters or 4 inches in depth. But you can use any bread mold you have. The dough has fermented, so I'll take it out of the oven. Let's see what it looks like. This crater-like appearance is what you should expect to find, and it's normal. Because this is a true no-knead bread, I simply plop the dough into the buttered pan as is, without degassing it. Now I take the same fork that I was using, and start to press the dough into the pan. This is done to degas the dough and to give it some sort of shape. I keep pressing it until the surface is completely flat, to ensure an even rise. I then place a kitchen towel over it and let it ferment in the oven with the light on once again. This will not be a loaf with a smooth top, because there was no shaping, so this rough and rugged look is what you're gonna get. I'll cover the dough again while the oven gets hot. When it is, I'll bake it at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit until it's done, which is this moment right here. So I'll remove it from its pan and allow it to cool on a rack to prevent the occurrence of a soggy bottom. While the loaf is still hot, I paint the top with butter, mostly to give it a shiny look. I'm gonna be very honest with you, the texture of this bread is a bit sponge-like, because we barely developed the gluten. So be aware of what to expect if you think about trying this recipe. Isn't this orange marmalade beautiful? There's a link in the description for the video where I made it. I recommend that you give it a watch if you're interested. Despite not being fluffy, the bread is soft and quite acceptable given the little work involved. I came back to show you the texture once again because I don't want to deceive you. But anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see each other in the next video. Bye.